10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack. Today is July 6th, and um, I've got a quick episode for you all today. So let's get started with that. The first piece of information we have is this from Schifrin in the uh, forum, and he says the GMC RPIP 18 Conflict of Interest Community Feedback. So, what is this? Let's have a look to see what Schifrin's saying. He says, in the Conflict of Interest section, of RPIP 18 that says that any GMC member who submits a grant application shall abstain from scoring, voting on, or participating in GMC discussions about any grants during the application period for which they are an applicant. They may participate in the ratifying snapshot vote. They may also score, vote, and participate in discussions in future rounds during which their grant is ongoing, provided they have not submitted an application during that round for any new grants. So basically what this means is that, say, um, you know, on the GMC, I'm a member, I submit a grant. That means I am not allowed to discuss any grants that are on the slate for the GMC in that round. Um, that, yeah, we'll, we'll carry on with that. Um, so it says GMC members are often highly active community participants who frequently apply for grants. This would be very debilitating to some of the most active members of the GMC from being able to contribute, which poses a risk to the GMC functioning efficiently. Instead of completely excluding them, an alternative approach would be to disqualify them from participating in decisions related to projects that can be argued as being within their own industry or line of work. In such cases, an applicant should have the ability to challenge or nullify a committee member's decision if they can present a convincing argument that their own work is similar. Or if we want to take this step further, we could make specific categories. Sorry, I lost my place. We could make specific categories. Yeah, here it is. Um, the applicants um, fall under, such as research, development, f development feature, marketing, etc. Along with this solution, the GMC members should repeatedly uh, make it abundantly clear that they have a grant during that cycle. The GMC is seeking feedback from the community on how to amend this issue, if at all. So Val was the first person to reply, saying, honestly, I'm fine with simply removing this entirely and bringing something back if there's an issue. If I recall correctly, and it's been a minute, the idea here is that we don't want the GMC members denying others so they can get more of some scarce pie. Right now, we're more uh, good idea limited than resource limited, so I don't think this is adding value. Definitely a worthwhile thing to figure out when we do hit scarcity, though. And then Dr. Dufa says, I don't know about this. I'm sympathetic to the concern, but if the same people are routinely applying for grants and on the GMC, it seems something has gone wrong along the way. It's not about if they can be trusted, but about appearances. However, I'm also not naive to the fact that it can be hard to find people to serve committee on committees who are also um, from the same also not from the same small group of active community members, maybe for any cycle where the funding requests are greater than the GMC budget for that cycle, they are restricted in participating, otherwise they are allowed. Um, and then I had a comment saying, I agree with Val in this situation, the text should be removed entirely except for restricting the individual GMC member from con commenting on their own grant application. If PDAO members feel this is an issue, we can certainly bring this up again after a few cycles. So um, I like um, Val's idea of the scarcity thing as well. Um, I think that definitely makes sense. Um, you know, we've got thousands of RPL in the in in waiting to apply for to give out grants and once that situation changes and you know it's like people fighting over scarce resources then it might be um, worthwhile to put restrictions in place and who can apply and can't like um, adjudicate on grants but until then I think you know we're all good to go um, and um, I really think that this this language should be changed of course if you have any ideas or opinions about this pop into the forum and leave your ideas we'd love to hear them okay let's move on from that now to this next piece of um, information we have so patches here says since you all don't look at support please don't install an operating system upgrades until all clear or your metrics will break 
or if you don't use Grafana, then whatever. So let's have a look at support and see what patches is talking about. So here there's a screenshot from support of a person's uh, Grafana dashboard all being like balked, I think is the official language. Um, I think uh, what was figured out was that um, if you um, update, you know, your, your system, then um, something is happening on the back end where um, it, your node is not talking to Grafana anymore and none of the information is being uh, transmitted the way it should be. So um, if you are a daily Grafana user, then maybe it's worth not updating your um, operating system until you, um, unless we figure out what's, what's going wrong with that. And at the moment, I don't know what is going wrong with that. Um, I'm not sure whether... Yeah, I'm not sure what, um, if if we know what's going wrong with it, I'm sure, you know, somebody will help me out with that information in the next day or so. But um, if we, yeah, it seems like there might be an issue with Docker. So Steely saying bad Docker. Um, but as soon as we figure out what's going on, then I'll, I'll let you all know. And we can, we can, um, we can figure that out together. Okay, um, so next we have this uh, reminder from Shifrin saying that only 84 people out of the 150 who got POAPs have registered for the diversity raffle. Um, and Shifrin says, don't forget to register here. So what is that uh, client diversity raffle? Let me remind you. So Shifrin had a month long campaign in June to get people off Geth and onto a minority execution layer client. Um, people who are already on a minority execution layer client like me or others who had switched because of this uh, because of this like um, this campaign, they uh, were given NFTs. Those NFTs are used as um, raffle tickets in this raffle. So here it says, you know, the Rocket Pool Client Diversity Initiative um, raffles um, start daytime is pending. Raffles should start around the second week of July. So that should be in the next couple of days, maybe this weekend, something like that, or sometime next week. And then the prizes, you know, the first one's 12 RPL with a whole bunch of other things attached. The prizes number two to six are 0.1 ETH which is really nice. And then prizes number seven to 23 are four RPL, which is also really nice. And then um, the next um, eight prizes, six, seven prizes, sorry, are um, NFTs. And uh, there's some Rocketeers and um, Rocketeer progenies to, uh, to give out. And then the description is, you know, the Rocket Pool community demonstrated its commitment to de decentralization and Ethereum's principles by collectively supporting and promoting the use of minority clients. This initiative showcased the strength um, and unity of the community, um, highlighting their dedication to upholding the values of the Ethereum ecosystem. This raffle is held to celebrate the success of the participants and the initiative overall. So of course there's three pops, but only you only get one ticket. And so far there's 92 people now who have entered. Um, so you've got like a one in three chance of winning something and one in um, four chance of winning actual crypto, which is which is amazing odds, um, really, really good odds. So if you are, um, you know, if you have those pops and you haven't um, entered yet, get to the address in the description below and you can you can enter into this raffle that you might have a decent chance of winning something. Okay, um, next we had a little bit of a drama between uh, different uh, counting systems. So Ken here said, I just noticed we passed 1 million ETH of total value locked on, um, and this is a screenshot of Grafana uh, showing that there's a, a whole lot of ETH locked in, in Rocket Pool. Uh, and, and this is just on like um, nodes for, in terms of staking. It's not including um, RPL staked in that value locked at the same time. And um, you know, that's a really nice milestone. However, others were quick to point out that it's not actually quite the case and that can, um, the value that um, Grafana is throwing up has some mistakes in it. And um, Invis was the one who was like kind of pointing that out. So he said that um, the total ETH locked is 766,000. Oh no, actually maybe it did claim RPL locked as well. Yeah, okay, it did claim RPL. It did include RPL locked. So it says, um, 
total ETH locked is 766,229. That's including the uh, ETH that is staked, the R ETH that is in collateral, the undistributed balances and unclaimed rewards. Oh, but maybe it doesn't include the Q. And then it says total RPL locked is 9,110,000. Um, the RPL staked is um, 800, 8,900,000 unclaimed rewards 170,000 slashed RPL zero unused inflation um, 2 million sorry 2,600 not million and then total uh, locked value is 950,000 ETH or about 1.8 billion dollars so Ken was like hmm so there was a whole discussion that kind of popped up about why um the numbers might be wrong. Ken says, I trust, the, I think I trust the Oz more than Grafana, but why the difference? And um, in this is because Grafana is legacy code from like two protocol updates ago, and that there's some issues with like how the numbers it's gathering. And um, he says, My sleepy, and this says that my sleepy guess is that it isn't accounting for exit and mini pools or something like that. And Patches says, Grafana is probably, yeah, that exiting a mini pool leaves it in staking status and just sets a bull so i bet the metrics collector counted those as active still and he says check out um slash tvl show all true and um Noshua says somehow the difference is bigger but how many and then Ken says how many mini pools are active in rocket pool grafana is showing twenty five thousand one hundred and five staking plus 121 in pre-launch so that is eight hundred seven thousand eth which is more than in Viz's calculations are the mini pool numbers right so uh, Patches says, you know, vacant dissolves, dissolves, um, and uh, not sure says see big uh, beacon stats. So then, um, you know, he got information from um, the Pateris's website, Rocket Scan, and that's showing um, twenty five thousand one hundred staking with one hundred twenty one pre launch mini pool queue is two hundred sixteen bond reductions eighty three. Um, and then there's a screenshot here of Invis' stuff. He says mini pool states this pending is 3,750, active is 20,030, and exited is 1,684. So there's some differences there too. Um, and then if you have a look at uh, the Grafana, it says the staking is 25,105, finalized is um, 1,578, initialized 216. So there's some like inconsistencies with with the numbers, how they're not matching. And then um, Nosho says exited mini pools explains 53,000 ETH difference. Grafana still has 6,000 more after accounting for that. And then... Um, Ken says we've got so many validators we've lost count and <laughs> I really like that that's great um and then uh Nosha says Grafana and Rocket Scan are based on the execution state uh, layer state mini pool stay in staking state forever including exited ones um he says I'm guessing that the new Atlas Q 200 mini pools in Q and 200 times um 32 ETH is roughly the difference so um Ken says so in Viz reports 23 1780 pending and active mini pools rocket scan reports 25105 staking and 121 pre-launch and 216 mini pools in the queue but i need to subtract um 1684 exited mini pools from that staking so the total number is 23758 and that's really close to invis's number of 23780 the difference might be slashed mini pools i think we might have had 12 no, that's 22 slashings. I think that's too many. I don't think we've had that many slashings. Um, and then he says, is this the correct math? I still don't get why we don't obtain the same number from of current mini pools. And then um, Nostro says, I'm not sure about the 22 mini pool difference. Ken says, I'm perplexed as well. I don't think I did the arithmetic wrong on on my phone. And then um, Invis says, I don't know. My math is probably more accurate. Um, I just know that my math is probably more accurate. And then um, Joe comes in and says, I want to highlight that we've reached a point where I don't even tunnel vision. Oh, no, that's something else. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, Ken says, I have a feeling that is true about the math, uh, Invis's math, uh, given the detail in your set, but it's weird and a bit of a tall tale, tale, tail tail um when the other numbers can't be ordered to equal the other method of calculation i kind of have a feeling that we missed something so um queued mini pools are only worth one eth 
my notes uh, yeah so yeah we're still trying to f figure this out um yeah ken says but i'm still trying to count the current mini pools ones that have not finalized the mini pool count should match right maybe i'm just too tired to do the maths um and then there's even more numbers here where um rocket watch is pulling up um different numbers um mini pool count 25,000 no 23,527 um, and then Ken says you're killing me yet yeah, another number um, he says I work in this as I would ignore rocket scan the last data point on that chart is from three days ago so there's some issues there as well so yeah um, I, I'm not sure where that conversation ends but it's i think it's still a mystery um if 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 that mystery has been solved please let me know and i'll cover it in tomorrow's episode otherwise um hopefully someone will get to the bottom of why the numbers not adding up and how many mini pools slash validators we have on rocket pool in total okay um yesterday of course was the new rewards period that started so every time there's the rewards period there's um order order guessing game and you know the, um, members of the community like to take part in the game to try to guess the order of the different um order members and their the the has as they get their um, hashes in for their tree generation and here we have um results from trevor in who actually won the raffle yesterday uh, not the raffle sorry the guessing game yesterday and the prize was five rpl um fizz of course said that this was the last uh, game that he was he would be supporting with the prize but people can carry on doing it if they want but uh, the order was um, rocket scientists um super fizz uh, lighthouse anthony sasano and then uh, rocket pool one rocket pool t coinbase ventures um rocket pool three rocket pool two and then um, crypto manufacturer that's yorick um so uh, here trevor n actually got 7.25 which i think someone was saying was an all-time high score on this game so that's really cool congratulations trevor n for winning the last um raffle game with the prize well, the last uh or thou guessing game with the prize um that's really cool maybe someone will keep the prize going i think um it's a nice little thing that happens in the community and um maybe you know the grant application window is open it might be worth writing a grant for that um and of course you know as the rewards period ended then a new rewards period begins and um, rpl inflated by seventy thousand and twenty five point eight new rpl the total supply now is 19 million five hundred forty seven thousand four hundred and ninety five rpl in total and um that that is that's going to you know the five percent of that inflation is going to be divided out amongst um node operators amongst the um, the pdao the odao um and um all those good people so yeah there's now 1.5 million more rpl than there was when the protocol went live on mainnet so yeah, we've inflated five percent since that time <laughs> Okay, and finally, there's this um, screenshot that someone shared um, here. Hippocrates shared it about the Maverick exchange that I've talked about on Rocket Fuel and on um, Into the DeFi and the Gravita episode a couple of times. So, you know, this is something that I mentioned on the show a few times. So I'm definitely putting this information out there to let you all know that there's some question marks about this now. So in the Maverick Discord, there was a comment here um, by a person saying, I was looking around and wondering where you push the factory pool contract source code on etherscan on github um where's that information basically and then someone says that given that maverick protocol has 42 million in tvl it seems very strange that the source code of the contract is not publicly available i thought complete transparency was a core tenet of DeFi. why should anyone trust the code if they can't read the source and then zach says yeah open source is definitely our plan so i presume zach is one of their team members who still hasn't um you know shared the information yet and Joachim says to be frank um contract verification is kind of the cornerstone and foundation of DeFi safety transparency and security without it, it becomes impossible to know what kinds of contract performance risks a user is taking on it is unlikely but for all we know the person who deployed the pool factory could have slipped a rug 
into the code right before deploying it and literally none of us would have the means to know for sure this might as well be a fully custodial centralized exchange i understand you guys want to protect your intellectual property but there are plenty of perfectly useful licenses and legal terms for releasing the code to do that without giving away your intellectual property and still giving the users the means to know exactly the terms of the contracts that they are agreeing to so this is definitely um you know a, a red flag in all honesty about a project um and this is not you know the normal way that DeFi projects traditionally operate so um definitely um keep that in mind if you are um providing liquidity on on maverick um because like Joachim says here um, there is a possibility that there could be something malicious slipped into the codes and there's no way for any of us to know what that would be because we haven't been able to see the source code and we don't know what's supposed to be there and what isn't supposed to be there and uh, what like you know where it stands so this is something that's really interesting and um, it's really unusual that um, you know a protocol of maverick size and who've gotten a lot of hype recently in the DeFi spaces um, uh, why they're not actually open sourcing their information um i find that really unusual um it's not necessarily like you know cause for alarm but um it, like i said it's, it's a red flag so um i don't know if their team has given a better answer about this yeah or not or what they're what they're doing but um if you um if you have if you have uh, any money if you have any t you know value locked on um, maverick definitely keep that in consideration um, whether you want to withdraw it or not, I guess that's your decision to make. But um, it definitely is a is a red flag. And yeah, so here's non fungible Yokum saying that the code is not is not open sourced. Um, but it's not too much of a there's not too much of the discussion that's going on. So um, if if there is an, if there are any updates, then I'll I'll try to let you know. But on that note, I hope you all have. Um, Love the rest of your day and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.